interference effect refers to the inability of an athlete to respond maximally to both resistance and endurance training concurrently. So what's the difference? Resistance training refers to relatively short duration repeated bouts of high intensity muscular contraction. Endurance training refers to relatively low intensity, long duration, continuous aerobic exercise stressing the cardiovascular system. These differences are encoded at the cellular level by neural stimulation frequency. Repeated high frequency motor unit activation is utilized during resistance training bouts, whereas low frequency continuous motor unit activation is associated with endurance exercise. This is important because these differences result in separate and conflicting cellular signals and adaptations that inhibit maximal adaptations to either of the individual stimuli. A major consequence of resistance training is increased blood concentration of insulin-like growth factor 1. IGF-1 binds and activates its receptor on the cell membrane, resulting in an activation of PI3K which phosphorylates protein kinase B, also known as AKT. PKB phosphorylates mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, which then phosphorylates P70S6 ribosomal protein S6 kinase beta-1. Activation of P70S6K increases the rate of protein synthesis at the ribosome. Phosphorylation of 4EBP1 results in disassociation from a complex with the translation initiation factor EIF4E. Once free, EIF4E forms a complex with EIF4G, resulting in upregulated mRNA for protein synthesis. The overall effect is an increase in myotube production, which leads to muscular hypertrophy, or enlargement of the muscle cell. Continuous aerobic exercise utilizes adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, for muscular contractions, resulting in increased concentration of adenosine monophosphate, or AMP. Increased AMP changes the ratio of ATP to ADP to AMP, resulting in an overall reduced energy charge of the cell. AMP binds to and activates AMP-activated protein kinase, or AMPK. At the same time, calcium released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum binds to calmodulin-dependent protein kinase, or CAMK. Increased reactive oxygen species from the mitochondria activates P38 mitogen-activated protein kinase, or P38-MAPK. All three kinase pathways converge on PGC1-alpha, peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma coactivator 1-alpha, which coordinates increased number, density, and size of mitochondria. This is also known as exercise-induced binochondrial biogenesis. This results in an increased overall oxidative capacity of the cell. While these adaptations thus far seem separate, there is a known interference effect. This is brought about by the activation of AMPK, which phosphorylates the sclerosis protein 1 and 2 complex, otherwise known as TSC1 or TSC2. The TSC complex inhibits the mTOR complex, reducing its downstream effect on protein synthesis and muscle hypertrophy. Therefore, by activating the aerobic pathway, this is concomitant deactivation of the hypertrophic pathway. The interference between these two pathways is proposed to explain why concurrent training diminishes adaptations away from optimal for a given training stimulus.